Hey guys, Skylar here from the Mint Change You Can Wear. So today I want to make another Morgan dollar coin ring and add some sapphires to it. We did a video similar to this a couple of weeks ago where we bead set a bunch of sapphires and a diamond into it, but it's still a pretty big thick ring. So for this one, I like a little bit of a thinner ring, but I really love the detail of the Morgan dollar. So what we're going to be doing is thinning the ring out quite a bit and then instead of bead setting we're going to flush set a bunch of sapphires into it. This is going to be a really awesome coin ring. I'm really excited about this coin ring and the coin rings we've been making lately. We're taking coin rings and bringing them into the realm of fine jewelry and that's super exciting to me. So I've got my Morgan dollar, got my sapphires, let's get started making this coin ring. Alright so here's our Morgan dollar. I want it to be tail side out so we're going to be putting this facing up in our Jason's Works auto punch. And if you guys are wondering where I get my tools, you guys can check out my latest tool list video. I'll be adding that in the description box below. And for this guy, we're going to use a 7 8 It's the biggest one that they make. And that's going to be a good start to get a thinner band. Alright, that's a great start. So now what we're going to do is deburr this sharp edge because that is where splits start. And you don't want to split your ring. So we'll deburr it with our deburring tool. And it comes from China. It comes from China. It comes from China. From China. 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 Now we have this guy all cut and deburred and we need to anneal it so we can soften the metal and then start doing all our folding. And since I'm going to be cutting all the detail inside of this coin ring away, I didn't wrap the cone. And you got a little bit of damage in there, which doesn't matter. Like I said, we're cutting it all out anyway. And so now we have it like this. We're going to re-anneal it, re-soften it, because we just work hardened it. And we're going to start our Swedish wrap process. And that's going to shrink the whole thing down to a much smaller size so we can make it an appropriate ring size. Alright, we have our coin ring all folded, so now we need to Swedish wrap it. And Swedish wrapping, people always ask why it's called that. It's because a guy named Mikhail Moller, he's from Sweden. Let's see if I can't find a picture of him. Oh, here we go. Um, this is him. He invented this method of shrinking these down. Super awesome. Thanks again, Mikhail. To be perfectly honest, I'm not sure this is a picture of Mikhail or not. It's for sure the only Swedish guy I actually know. Alright, so let's wrap this in Teflon tape and then get it shrank down. We will have Mikhail play us out. I don't know what that means to play us out. What does that mean? Boy, it is super hard to wrap something and watch the camera at the same time. I don't mess up this much when I'm actually doing it without the camera being on. Alright, so now at this point, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but a lot of times when you do it like this, it gets stuck in the bottom. And the way I deal with it is put it upside down, get one of these brass plungers that fit right in the bottom, and then just push it out. There we go. Now 
All right, now we have it like this, and it's pretty thinned out on this side. I don't want to go too much farther because I don't want to remove the Ngabi truss that's on here. But what I do want to do is still get a little bit thinner. So we have lots of extra room on this side, this coin edge side. So what I'm going to do is just grind off that coin edge side and basically remove that lip. And so once that's removed, I think that'll be about the thickness I'm looking to have. <laughs> nice and thinned out it looks really good what I want to do now before I cut the inside out because look how thick that is still it's crazy thick way too thick uh, this sides about right though but what I want to do before we start to cut that inside out is give this outside band just a slight curve it's a little too flat I'm not a big fan of the super flat ring so I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a curve and we're gonna be using the Pepe tools ring stretcher reducer and this has the die plate that's designed for coin rings because it's a little bit bigger on the inside it has 17 degree holes on one side and 25 degree holes on the other this helps coin ring makers and i found out who started recently selling these skip king over at king's coin rings tools so go check him out he's probably got a sale running on him probably get a really good deal on him. I'll leave a link in the description box below for his Etsy shop. But I think for this particular application, we're going to be using the 17 degree side. Just enough to make it a little bit curved. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll clean this inside out. We'll probably deburr some of it just to get a lot of it out quickly and then finish it up with a sanding drum. the insides all roughed in and I used a sanding wheel sanding drum a gray wheel and a white wheel so these are the gray wheels and white wheels the white wheels much more coarse and really good for getting a lot of the bigger detail out of there and the gray wheel is a lot finer so that way you can get all the rough scratches from the white wheel or the sanding drum out and then once you're done with the gray wheel you can move to a buff which is this guy and so I'll just use this with my green rouge, we'll have a really awesome mirror finish on the inside. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, that is what I'm talking about. Now it's time to start lining out our stones. All right, I got my graver's ball all ready to go. Got our coin ring all ready to start putting stones on it. So we're gonna put it in the ring holder and start lining them up on here. So there was a couple ways I was going to do it. I was thinking about trying to put the stones in here right between the Ngawi Trust and States or just take up most of the word States, but I don't think it's gonna fit really well. So I decided just to turn it around and do it across the backside right here. Well, this will become the front, leaving United States of America and Ngawi Trust on the front. So that was my plan. Now we'll start licking, sticking some stones on here. All right, it looks really nice and lined up. That is going to make an awesome ring.
the first thing you do after you drill a hole, countersink the hole. All right, now we got our holes drilled, so we're going to start taking our ball burr and ball burring the holes out one at a time and then setting each stone individually. And so we'll do ball burr first and then switch to setting burrs. stone is like perfectly set on top of that hole. It's exactly the right size. So what now all I have to do is just press it in and it'll squeeze in just perfectly. At least that's the plan. And when you're pushing it in, before you do, make sure the stop sign of the stone is lined up. Like if you look at the table of the stone, you'll have, it'll look like a little hexagon, little stop sign. And just make sure it's up and down and straight. You don't want it crooked. All right, that stone could not be in there more perfect. It is perfectly sitting in there, stop signs exactly lined up. The stone is level, it's not tilted one way or another, and it's just below the surface. So that way we can take our burnisher and burnish some metal over the top of the crown of that stone. So now we need to burnish the hole, and this is a burnishing tool right here. So let's talk about this guy a little bit because I've had some questions about it. So first of all, this is just a regular old Euro tools, I think, like tool holder. I don't even know what they're called, but they're really cheap, not expensive. And this guy in here, all it is was a burr like this, just a cheap old burr, probably a ball burr that the end was cut off of and, and then round it off with a sanding disc like this guy. So once it got rounded off, just polish it with a polishing wheel and you made yourself a burnisher. Just put it in here and leave it in there. And you can buy burnishers, but from what I've heard, they just are trash. So the guy I've been learning fine jewelry with taught me how to make these, Paul Bartnick, and just a really awesome trick. And you can make them, so I've made them three different sizes. This is the medium one, and then you make one a little bit bigger than this, a little bit smaller than this, depending on the size stone you're gonna be burnishing. Because if you use like the ones that they sell, it's like a massive, huge thing, and it makes a big old ugly ring around all your stones, and you don't want that. You want it to be nice and fine. That is burnishers. So let's go ahead and burnish that stone in. And so we're gonna take our burnisher and, I don't know, at a 45 degree angle or so, just slowly start to push that metal from the top over that stone a little bit and that's what's going to lock it in place. Just slowly, carefully do it because you do not want to slip while doing this. If you do, you have to fix the scratch. The different levels on the coin from the detail make it a little more challenging. So just be careful as you're going around like the lettering because it's just going to make you want to slip and then cause a scratch. So slowly and carefully, like this O right here, oh my goodness. All right, that sucker is set, not loose at all. That's exactly what we're looking for. That's really sweet. All right, so we got one down. Let's get four more in there. Everything is in and set. Good deal. All right, so now that we're at this stage, 
we're going to take it off of here and then antique it. We're going to use some liver of sulfur gel to antique it. Once that's done, we will polish it all up and get it ready to go. That'll be that. Okay, so we have our ring all degreased, cleaned up with Dawn dish soap, hanging on a little hanger right above me here. And then I have our water that I just put in the microwave for about a minute, so it's just about boiling, not quite. Have that ready to go. Now what we need to do is take our liver of sulfur XL gel. Any liver of sulfur gel will work just fine. And we'll put about a drop or two of it in the water. And that is gonna be the solution we're gonna use to antique this guy. There we go, that'll work. And we'll throw our ring in there and get it antiqued. I always like the colors it creates right off the bat. It got like, I don't know, some really cool colors and they're just so light. It won't last very long if I did keep antiquing it, but too bad because it looks really neat. We want that antique to get in a lot deeper so it, it stands out and holds up for a lot longer. All right, that's probably long enough. So I'm just gonna dip it in some water. Oops. So here's where we are now, nicely antiqued. And so the inside, I'm probably gonna do a little four out steel wool just to get it off of there a little quicker. But on the outside, usually what I do is, you know, hit it with some four out steel wool and then use a disposable jewelry wipe. But I think what I'm gonna do this time just to try it out, because I want a little bit of a finer finish on the outside, is I'm going to use this four out steel wool on the inside just to get most of it off and then just polish the outside with a uh, buff and some green rouge. And I'll do the same thing on the inside. I think that'll make a really nice fine finish. We'll, we'll find out though. We will find out together. So that's what the inside looks like right now. And what we like to do too is crisscross our lines. We're gonna do one way at a 45 and turn it and do another 45 on the inside and the outside. If you don't do that, you leave lines or grooves and stuff. You definitely don't want that. All right, that looks great on the inside. Just perfect mirror finish. just really slightly over the face. I don't want to do too much. I want to leave a lot of it. Check that out. That's an amazing coin ring, guys. That is a really, really cool. I think I really like the flush setting. You keep all the detail around it. I mean, look at that. You don't really lose any of the detail around it at all. So that seems to be a method that I really, really like for this particular ring. Oh wow, that's pretty neat. Yeah, really enjoyed this video, guys. I hope you guys did too. And also, that's another thing, these aren't simulated sapphires. These are like, you know, regular natural sapphires. I'm not gonna put all this work into it to put something simulated in. It just doesn't make sense for me. I hope you guys learned a little bit about flush setting and the flush setting burnishers that I've been using. A lot of this information is just really, really handy. Once you get it in practice, it all starts to click. At least it does for me, so get out there, Get some coin rings made, get some practicing done. If you don't wanna do that, totally understand it. I make coin rings for a living, so you can always check out my website, changeyoucanwear.net for the rings that I make. If you have any special projects you really wanna get made, give me a, shoot me an email, shoot me a text, and I'm sure we can figure something out. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.